What's right. coming up at night? All right. Well, we are heading to the North American International Toy Fair to see some of the hottest trends for toys in 2017. Plus, a flight from London finally lands in San Francisco after a massive delay caused by a mouse. I think you can handle it all. Kill time, man. I think you can handle it all on your own. I think you can. Oh, I'm just trying to fill time. That man. That Good morning from Fox 5 News. This is Good Day Atlanta at 9 a.m. Good morning and welcome to Good Day Atlanta at 9 o'clock. I'm Constance Jones in for Elise Eating. Well, living in the country may be quieter than living in the city, right? But a new study shows that rural life may not be good for your health. The Fox Medical Team's Beth Galvin will join us to talk about what researchers found out. Then it's time to look out for Atlanta's most photogenic baby. The annual contest benefits Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. Find out how you can enter your little one and make sure that you have a great photo shoot. Plus, we're on a hunt for hidden treasures this morning. Antiques expert Paul Brown is here to tell us about uh, your valuable heirlooms. He's live with us in studio. But we begin with breaking news this morning in DeKalb County, where police are on the scene of where two people have been shot. Good day's Mark Teichner is on the scene with the very latest. Well, good morning, Constance. We are at the Northgate Townhouse community located on Lawrenceville Highway, about a mile and a half outside the perimeter. And what has transpired is taking place inside uh, Unit 3 here at this townhouse community. That is where we've been told uh, two people have been shot. One of them is dead at the scene. Uh, the deceased is an adult male, and police say he appears to have been uh, the person who pulled the trigger. They think that his... Um, wounds are self-inflicted. They also are telling us that he uh, allegedly shot a woman uh, here. She was shot in the face. Now that woman is expected to survive. Obviously that is good news. Uh, still trying to piece together exactly what led up uh, to this double shooting, but uh, investigators are looking at this as being uh, domestic related. Uh, at this point uh, they don't know again what caused uh, the possible domestic squabble that obviously spiraled out of control, but uh, we're working to get 
some more information. We're expecting an update from police uh, in the next couple of minutes or so. When we get that, we'll be able to pass along some more information. But right now, we've got one man dead. We've got a woman uh, who is in the hospital, expected to survive, having been shot in the face in this double shooting that appears to be domestic related. Reporting live from DeKalb County, I'm Mark Teichner for Good Day Atlanta. Constance, back to you. All right, Mark, following all the breaking details for us this morning, thank you. All right, let's get more of the morning's top stories. Good day's Buck Lanford is standing by with that. Good morning, Buck. Good morning to you, Constance. New this morning, two people are dead after a shooting last night at a bar in Warner Robins. It happened at just one more. It's on Russell Parkway. Police believe the gunfire started as part of a fight. Two men in their mid-20s were shot and killed. Their names have not been released, and so far no arrests have been made in the case. Fulton County Police are investigating a deadly pedestrian accident. The crash happened overnight on Fulton Industrial Boulevard near Marvin Miller Drive. Officers say a driver hit a man who was standing in the road. They believe he was impaired. Police don't expect that driver to be charged in this case. The GBI is investigating after a police officer shot a man yesterday on the Silver Comet Trail. Dallas police say one of its officers opened fire when the man refused to drop a rifle that he'd been waving around. Investigators say the man was acting erratically and refused repeated demands to put down the weapon. He was taken to uh, Wellstar Kennestone Hospital. When they rounded the parking lot, they saw the gentleman up on a picnic table with a rifle. He was given several verbal commands to drop the rifle, show himself, put the rifle down. He refused. He stood up. He started waving the rifle on back and forth. When it got to the point to where it was pointed toward one of the officers, the officer fired on him. Luckily, no one else on the trail, which is frequented by runners and bikers, no one else there was hurt. North Georgia will be cleaning up today from storms packing strong winds and heavy rains. A tree fell onto a home in Peachtree Corners. The family was inside at the time, and they actually saw the tree coming right toward them. We both looked up at the trees, and we saw one starting to come towards our house. And we're standing there watching it coming towards our house going, oh, my gosh, it's about to hit the house. Crews worked last night to remove the tree from the home, and no one was hurt. A little mouse made for a big delay on a British Airways flight from London to San Francisco. The passengers were all buckled up and ready to go when the crew told them that a mouse spotting meant they couldn't take off. The crew joked that the mouse couldn't enter U.S. airspace without a passport, and they told everyone they needed a new plane. Well, that meant a four-hour delay. I think it makes sense because I wouldn't really want to eat food on a plane that had a mouse. So I think we were all fairly happy we switched planes. British Airways apologized and said they were satisfied that only two legged passengers were on the flight once it took off. How about that? <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I, Those I, are your headlines. How about that? Back thanks, to you guys. Thanks, Buck. <laughs> yeah, if I saw a mouse, I might go running, too. I don't know. Yeah, a little right. bit. <laughs> <laughs> Joined by Joanne Feldman to talk about our changing weather. And it is cold out there after those storms came through. I know. Yesterday morning, we were enjoying 60s, got up to 80 in the afternoon. And that is well behind yeah, us right. now. And this time around, it's going to stick around a little longer. I mean, mm -hmm. we've had brushes with cold air, obviously, this winter. But this one will last a few more days. All right, so settle in. Here we go. This is a look at the satellite radar picture. Cold front came through late yesterday. The storms associated with that are long gone. Some of you got some big rainfall totals, but it, it blasted through the Atlanta area so fast that the official rainfall total at the airport was only 16 hundredths of an inch of rain. Lots of hail reports, wind reports. Now the skies are clear, and we're looking back to the northwest where there is plenty of quiet weather to be seen. That's going to be a good indication of what we'll get here for several more days. But the temperatures, this is the big story here, how much these numbers have fallen since 24 hours ago, we are down about 21 to 24 degrees in most spots. And that's still leaving a lot of us in these chilly 40s for a few more hours. It's going to take some time to even crack 50 degrees. And then by this afternoon, most of us never get beyond the 50s, which is a touch below the normal high for March 2nd of 61. With this, it's breezy. It has been in Atlanta for a few hours now. It'll get breezy pretty much everywhere for the afternoon. These are the winds out of the northwest at about 15 miles per hour today. When the sun goes down, though, the winds will get lighter, and they're not going to pick up again tomorrow until the next cold front comes through Friday morning. This will be helpful because tomorrow morning is going to be noticeably colder than this morning, and so you probably don't want a wind chill on top of that making it feel even colder. So you don't have to worry about that early Friday. 
When the next cold front swings by, though, the biggest indication that the front is moving through is the pickup in the wind speeds again, because this front does not bring rain, and it doesn't drastically change temperatures either. It just means we can't warm up until sometime next week. Here is a look at the hour-by-hour -hour forecast today. High temperatures reaching mid-50s north, upper 50s in town, and a couple of spots around 60 to 61 uh, for maybe an hour or two today. And this is how cold we'll get later tonight. All 30s, uh, closer to Freezing in the North Georgia mountains that kind of skipped over 7 a.m. when it was all 30s. Some of those numbers obviously coming up to 40 or 41 by 8 a.m. tomorrow. Here's your Fox 5 Storm Team AccuWeather forecast, and we stay cool throughout the weekend. Coldest morning is Saturday at 32, and then some milder temperatures and a chance of storms for next week. Constance, Joanne, thank you. Well, today is Dr. Seuss's birthday. Theodore Geisel would have turned 113 years old today, and March 2nd is also Read Across America Day. Students celebrate Dr. Seuss by dressing up as their favorite character and of course reading his books in class. Of course one of his most famous books, one of my favorites, is The Cat in the Hat published back in 1957. And we've got a picture here you guys. This is at Atlanta's Deerwood Academy this morning as kiddos listen to a story. So that brings us to our hot topic question. What is your favorite Dr. Seuss book? And is your child dressing up as a character today? So let's see what you guys are saying on social media. Lauren says my son favorite Dr. Seuss books are Hop on Pop and There's a Walk It in My Pocket. He's only one, but those are the ones that keeps his attention. We read them over and over. All right, Melissa says, my all-time favorite is If I Ran the Circus. It's such a tongue twister. The faster I could read it, the more my children laughed. And then finally, we have a comment here from Dolores. She says, being the cat lover that I am, no doubt about it. It must be, it has to be, the cat in the hat. All right, tell us what you think, you guys. Go to our Fox 5 Atlanta Facebook page or tweet us at Good Day Atlanta. Our time now is 9.08 this morning, and coming up on Good Day, we'll see if our antiques expert, Paul Brown, has discovered any hidden treasure from those viewer submissions. Hey, good morning. How are you? I'm kind of a green eggs and ham guy. Green yes, and ham. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. Yeah, there you go. So, how's it going? Good, nice to good. see you. Nice to see you. I'm happy I get to do a segment with well, you. Well, all right. I am too. I think everyone else has had the pleasure except for me. Well, good. But now it's my lucky day. Well, all right then. Where are we sitting? Are we down the couch? I don't, I'm not doing? sure where. Oh, we're doing the stools. stools. Okay. okay. Oh. oh. Fun. Yep. No, yes. so just a heads up. It's hard to get him to talk. No, oh, I, yeah, I, I've, I've heard. I'm, he's a little shy here, so. Oh my goodness, <laughs> my reputation precedes me. No, I don't. It's all up here, baby. Nurses watch. What is a nurse's well, watch? Well, it's cool because. It, it, or should we wait? I mean, well, you will wait. I'll tell you yeah. about it because th that's the whole segment. Yeah, I know. Let me. It's one third of the segment. Okay. It is a third. Yes, we have three. And then you have an auction on March 7th? I do, March, March 7th. Okay. Today is March 2nd, isn't it? Yeah, yeah today's the 2nd, yeah, so the five days on, from now. Auction's on the 7th, Tuesday. AI. Tuesday.
perfect song for this segment. Our time now is 9-11. Maybe you found it at a thrift store or garage sale. So the question is, is it trash or is it treasure? Our antiques expert, Paul Brown, is here to talk about it. Thanks for joining us this morning. Well, thank you for having me. Let's hope it's more treasure than trash. Yeah, right? let's talk about this. This is a nurse's watch. first item is the nurse's watch. Mm -hmm. And it's called actually a fob watch, which really predates the wrist watch. This is how watches were worn, either pocket watch or vest watch. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, the nurse's watch became popular in England first, about the middle part of the 19th century. Really gained popularity in England uh, going into World War I, 1914 to 1918. Okay. And obviously, it's a nurse's watch. Obviously, nurses need to tell the time of for course. anything from dispensation of medicine to a check and pulse or any number of reasons. But they can't, you know, they have their hand, they need to have their hands free. Mm -hmm. And a wrist watch doesn't work as well for more like a hygiene uh, point of view. So what you have here is the nurse's watch. And for generations, nurses have been giving given these as like a rite of passage, like when they graduate oh, nursing wow, school. It's a very awesome. traditional gift. Yeah. And it actually hangs upside down. So generations of nurses have also been asked, why is your watch upside down? Well, it's upside so down so you can glance it. at it. Yeah, they do that it on their lapel so cool. or their sleeve or whatnot. And this one, so I, I blew this one up. This particular one, I believe, dates to the early 20th century. I could not see a maker's mark anywhere on okay. there. And that's the first thing you look for. I didn't see that, but stylistically, it, it, it just screams English, early 20th century to me. And the color, you can see on the back there, the, this sort of luster. And I realize the, the picture is not that great resolution-wise this big, but that color to me also indicates English because it's probably nine or 11 karat gold. These oddball oh, wow. carats yeah. were uh, common in England at the time. So all that being said, if it works, um, and if it doesn't, it's not mm -hmm. a tragedy. A good watchmaker or uh, you know, could watch fix service. it up, yeah. right? Well, you can. It's usually just filled with gunk, gunk and muck, oh, and they get. Yeah. You know, they got to clean cleaned. it up. Yeah. Gotta get cleaned out. But it's not tragic. But if it works, it's worth uh, three to four hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's it's a nice piece. I, it speaks to me. One of my daughters is studying to become a nurse. So yeah. I like you know, my mom was a nurse. My aunts are nurses. My 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 sister. You know, right. I could see well, that being an amazing gift passing on to family members. They would have known right away. Yeah, obviously, they would know what it was. I'm sure. <laughs> All right, now let's get to this locomotive okay. Steve engine bell. No, this is love, super cool. I love the bell. And yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know why I love the bell. Maybe just because it makes a lot of noise. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't it's know. A why. It has to make a lot of it, noise for a train. Right. Yeah. And it's a great bell. Um, it's highly collectible. Now, the, the viewer indicated that he believe it's a locomotive, but he or she, he or she believes it's a mm. locomotive bell, okay. and it may very well be. I just want to keep our minds open to the possibility that it could be also a nautical bell, which oh, case okay. would be worth, you know, ship's bell. It could be worth yeah. a little bit more. The way to indicate that would be the yoke. That's the piece that would go over this bell and hold it up, and mm -hmm. that a nautical yoke is different from a locomotive yoke. Of course, yoke. depending on how uh, it's going to be positioned. And I don't know if they have, you know, the, the, the bell has to have three things to work. Yeah. Obviously, you have to have, you know, the bell, yeah. uh, and you have to have this thing here to the left, the ringer, obviously, Ding. but you also have to have the thing that hangs it. Or it else yeah. Yes, it's heavy. It's you know, I mean, it's not. It's not going to ring yeah, itself. Yeah, it's got a little so dolly there. Looks like they're getting yes. around with it. Yeah. Yeah, and so. Um What's, well, what I would encourage the viewer to do is that on the ringer there, it should be stamped uh, Graham White Salem, okay. which is a company. I say is a company. They are still in business in Salem, Virginia, and they still manufacture uh, locomotive stuff. They make you oh, know, wow. subways, big trains, but they've been doing selling uh, uh, locomotive pieces um, for 150 years, and mm -hmm. they were sort of known as the industry standard. This was like, this is a, a quality bell. It's, okay. a, it's probably 125 years old, but somewhere on this ringer, I believe, is stamped. There'll be a stamp, and that'll okay. better ind indicate well, that'll, that'll That'll help us evaluate it. So, so um, you know, as it sits, just just like this, yeah. as it sits, it's probably worth eight hundred to a thousand dollars. But oh. no, wait, wait. Oh. If, 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 if the yoke tells us it's from from a ship, yeah. or if it has the yoke in general, if it, whether it's for a train or a ship, the value goes up. And if it's signed, the value goes up. So I could almost get to the point where I could double that value if it was complete and if it were signed. Okay? Talk about ring my bell. That's uh, pretty right, good right, for that yeah. much money. All right, let's get to the fireplace mantle, right? Okay, fireplace mail, pretty uh -huh. cool. Also speaks to me from more of a personal level. My my background, my parents owned an architectural antique store when oh, I was wow. a kid, so I kind of came up in architectural antiques, yeah. things that were people part love of, to have that stuff in their I home. know, it's well, so because cool. they, it's like repurposing. It's like, yeah. like the original recycling, you know. Yeah. So you know things that were built built in, whether it's a column or a door or paneling or a chandelier or in this case a mantle are called architectural mm -hmm. antiques. And the viewer indicated that he, he said it came from an antebellum home. Now antebellum. Okay means that's Latin for before the war, ante, before, yeah. bellum, war. So in this case, the American Civil War. And looking at it, to me, I, I think that's pretty accurate. I, okay. I would date it to that period as well. So is it painted or is that no, just the wood? No, it's kind of no, hard to no. tell it, That's the actually picture. the wood. It's, oh, it's, it's stained a, kind of a mahogany color. Well, yeah. I'm going to get to that in a second because that's kind of important. But you can, you can date it based on these pilasters here Ooh. and the dental molding on the shelf, but primarily this wonderful carved, swirling yeah, oak leaf gorgeous. pattern. 
Yeah. Okay, so you know the fireplace before central heating and such was the center of the home, yes. a place where families gathered. So a mantle doesn't really have any sort of utilitarian functions, just to be pretty, yeah. right? And so this oak leaf uh, cluster, this, this this band of oak leaves indicates like strength and solidity and growth from humble beginnings and the kind of traits you would want for your family. Yeah. You know, we all we all want to be thought of like that. And so that's that's very common. That makes it easy. That makes it easier to sell. It yeah. makes it desirable. Mm -hmm. It also makes it desirable that it's not painted because yeah. like 99.9 percent .9 of these I've ever seen, and that's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And this Normally one's probably been slathered with paint. Oh my God, and you thick lose white it enamel and paint, and it, it is a bear to strip. So somebody has done themselves a favor by and stripping kept it this. Like it, uh, that, yeah. Well, I don't know if it was kept or it stripped, stripped, but stripped regardless, down. it's mm -hmm. it's good because I, I tell you, I would subtract 500 bucks if it was painted it white. So Paul, how much is something like this? That's going to be worth a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. Wowzers, And and here, you still got the belt. Mirror. This is important too, because a lot of times that gets broken, oh. especially when you get removed. And it's it a gigantic piece. Oh, it's great, yeah, isn't someone it? Someone yeah. would love to have that. Absolutely. Out. All right, Paul, thank you so well, much. For I appreciate it. Okay, if you guys have some hidden treasure and you want to know, oh, there we go. There I'm goes sorry, the camera. Look at that. See, I was going to ask if we could yeah, talk about that. Let's talk about your auction. Let's it is March 7th. Auction. Let's talk about it. It is March 7th. It's Tuesday at 4 o'clock at that address, 4577 Roswell Road. Y'all come see me, buy some cool stuff, check it out. I'll be selling stuff all day long. The auction starts at 4 p.m., but we'll have the doors open early. Come preview, check it out, buy something. All right, and of course, if you have a goodie that you want them to check out, oh. email us at goodday at Fox 5 at um, Atlanta. Com. Of course, you can follow Paul Brown on Twitter at Auction King ATL. Joanne? Mm -hmm. And Constance, of course, uh, you know, if